This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the LTO's process on electric vehicle registration. Our road safety reminder in the Yonge Street Smarts portion centers on what to do when one encounters a solid yellow line with a broken yellow line. This week's Pine Chapel shall be about the importance of following the rule of the yellow box. Showcase this week shall have the subcompact SUV from Honda, the all new HRV. Well, for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2022 Clean Fuel National Junior Motocross Series Round 4. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Ready? Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The upgrading of the Candaba Viaduct of the North Luzon Expressway still has a long way to go, but it is moving forward. The contract to build a third viaduct between the existing northbound and southbound causeways over the swampland between Polilan and Bulacan in Apalitan, Pampanga is expected to award before the year ends. According to news reports, three bidders are vying to be awarded the 6 to 7 billion peso contract. According to NLEX Corp, aside from making travel safer and more convenient, the project once completed will translate to faster journeys as it will increase the maximum speed of the viaduct from 60 km per hour to 80 km per hour. The construction of the third 5-kilometer causeway expected to take at least two years. Meanwhile, the Candaba Viaduct is undergoing a four-year rehabilitation plan to improve its efficiency and safety. The viaduct is a strategic expressway link that has been serving the Metro Manila and Central and North Luzon Road Corridor for years now. The Candaba Viaduct remains a point where congestion happens at the NLEX. But this should become a thing of the past following its four-year rehabilitation. Meanwhile, getting from NLEX to SLEX or vice versa should be a breeze once the connector road is opened to motorists. This will happen sooner than later. The 23.3 billion NLEX SLEX connector road should be open to motorists by the first part of 2023. The 8-kilometer, 4-lane, all-elevated connector road extends the North Luzon Expressway from Calaocan City to Santa Mesa and Manila and link up with Skyway Stage, providing a seamless link to the South Luzon Expressway. The 5.15 km Section 1 of the NLEX SLEX Connector Road from C3 Road on 5th Avenue to Espana Boulevard is already 90% complete, while the 2.75 km Section 2 from Espana to PUP Santa Mesa is 22% complete. SLEX and Skyway Operator SMC Infrastructure will be the one connecting the end of the NLEX SLEX Connector at Santa Mesa to the Skyway Stage 3. 
the NLEX SLEX connector is expected to provide better access to the Manila ports in North Harbor and the Ninoy Aquino International Airport as well as Clark Airport. It is also expected to decongest traffic at ground levels in Metro Manila as cargo trucks will have an elevated round-the-clock alternative route free from truck dam. Travel time from SLEX Alabang to NLEX Balintawak is projected to be reduced to just 15 to 20 minutes from the present 1.5 to 2 hours. Not only travel times heading into and out of Manila, but also the travel times within the metropolis should be reduced once the NLEX SLEX Connector Road opens in the first quarter of the year. Continuing, motorcycle taxis now are being made legal, but Congress wants to review how they are operating and the DOTR wants the technical working group to undertake the reappraisal. Department of Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista has reconstituted the Technical Working Group or TWG that established guidelines for the operations of motorcycle taxis. In a department order ordering the TWG to renew its work, Bautista said there is a need to have a body that will oversee and monitor the continuous pilot implementation of the motorcycle taxi operations. The new constituted TWG's task to monitor the pilot run of motorcycle taxis, the review guidelines to ensure coordination of government agencies involved, and submit the data from their review to the House of Representatives and the Senate. The TWG is chaired by the Assistant Secretary of the Land Transportation Office with a board member of the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board as Vice Chairperson. Members will come from the LTO, the LTFRB, and representatives from the Metro Manila Development Authority and Committees on Transport from the House and Senate. Motorcycle taxi operators welcome the reconstitution of the technical working group to ensure they continue operating legally pending enactment of the law. And finally, the local government of Silang is coming to the rescue of Calax and the DPWH to resolve the right-of-way issues delaying the completion of the Silang interchange segment of the tollway. The mayor of Silang, Cavite, is offering to help solve the right-of-way problems that are delaying the completion of the Cavite Laguna Accessory Calax. Public reports quote Silang Mayor Kevin Anarna as saying he will meet with the Department of Public Works and Highways and private landowners to speed up the completion of the project that is crucial to Silang's development and achievement of cityhood status by 2025. The mayor said his administration is willing to help Epicala and the national government to fast-track the opening of the Calak silang interchange. Anarna hopes to forge a compromise agreement between the DPWH and the landowners before the end of the year. The silang interchange subsection of the Calax is 64%. It is certainly to the interest of the Silang authorities and their constituents to see to the early completion of the Silang interchange that will surely benefit motorists as well as businesses. And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. More and more people are looking to acquire electric vehicles for private use or for public transportation. However, the process for registration of EVs is not widely known. Motoring Forum hopes to clarify some of the issues and concerns regarding EV registration. In an earlier edition of Motoring Forum, various classifications of electric vehicles were discussed including which EVs from two, three, and four-wheelers are required to be registered with the Land Transportation Office. Also discussed are which EVs can be ridden or driven on major thoroughfares, national roads, and highways. This time, Motoring Forum will discuss the process for registration for EVs. According to Land Transportation Office Administrative Order 2021-39, the requirements for classification of new model electric vehicles and initial registration shall be in accordance with the requirements per existing policies, rules, and regulations on the registration of motor vehicles, except for emission requirements. The same order requires all manufacturers, assemblers, and or importers of electric vehicles shall, not later than three months prior to the introduction of any model in the market, submit the specifications of such model to the LTO, which shall determine the classification and the rate of MVUC, or motor vehicle user's charge. In other words, manufacturers and distributors of EVs require registration like the counterparts making and distributing motor vehicles powered by fossil fuels must first apply for accreditation. Then they must present a certificate of stock reported, and if they are distributing imported EVs, they must present a certification of payment of taxes and import duties from the Bureau of Customs. 
According to the LTO, the distributor or dealership must cover the registration of brand new EVs. But if the buyer wants to register the EV himself, he or she must submit the same requirements as for car companies. These include letter requests for classification, vehicle specifications, photos of the vehicle, and motor vehicles inspection report from the LTO. Other requirements for initial registration of EVs include original sales invoice, certificate of stock reported, original PMP HPG clearance, and appropriate insurance certificate of cover. Because EVs use electric motors powered by batteries instead of internal combustion engines, only VIN or vehicle identification number is needed for registration instead of chassis and engine numbers required for regular vehicles. So in essence, the registration process and requirements for EVs is similar to registering motor vehicles powered by fossil fuels. The only caveat for those wishing to acquire EVs is that they should be bought from legit sellers with taxes and duties duly paid and officially received. It also must be said that under IRR for the Republic Act 11697, also known as the Electric Vehicle Industry Development Act, or EVIDA, the LTO will prioritize the registration and renewal of registration of EVs. The Land Transportation Office needs to exert more efforts to inform the general public about the process for registration of EVs. It also needs to exert more effort to ensure the use of EVs are properly regulated for safety as well as order on the road. Too many EVs, the slow, two-wheeled kind, are being used on national roads and other main thoroughfares where they are not allowed. That's your Motor Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. You're back with us here on Motoring Today. We now have this week's important motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Solid yellow line with broken yellow lines is often found on bridges to separate the traffic. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay bawal kang lumipat papunta sa opposite side kung hindi ay maaari mong makabangga ang nasa kabila katulad ng ipinapakita sa animation. Stay on your lane all the time and do not overtake. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Paeng Chaper this week. Paeng Chaper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Alan, isang kapwa niyo Chaper. Ito ay isang palala na huwag huminto sa loob ng yellow box. Ang mga yellow box na matatagpuan sa intersections ay dapat palaging bakante kahit pa naka-green ang traffic light. Kapag nakahinto ang kabilang bandang intersection, mas mabuting maghintay ng tamang pagkakataon bago lumampas sa yellow box. Tandaan, sumunod sa yellow box roll upang maging maayos ang ating takbo sa kalsada. Ito po si Jose Alan Mendoza, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Life comes at you fast. If you're brave enough, drive right back at it. Brave the big city or the great outdoors. Brave the carpool or the extra cargo. Brave the unexpected with Honda Sensing. Brave the long road with fuel efficiency to reach your destination. The all-new Honda BRV. Brave the next level. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next.
In Motorsports News, after breaking rival Pali Bass's streak of wins in leg 10 of the 2022 race, Motorsports Club National Slalom Series held at Robinson's Place in Tipolo, Estefano Rivera starts his own streak, ruling the 11th leg for a second consecutive win. Estefano Rivera set a time of 60.14 seconds around the slalom course at Robinson Star Mills in San Fernando, Pampanga, bagging both the overall and front wheel category best time of day. Pavi Basia of PMMS Racing Team was a close second with a time of 60.56 seconds, with Austin Sarmiento third with 63.58. Rod Chang fourth fastest with 64.32, JP Politan fifth with 64.66, and July Johnson in sixth with 65.78. Austin Sarmiento was the quickest novice at the 11th leg of the National Slalom Series while also setting the production rear wheel best time of the day. Team Mitsubishi Rally Arts scored a victory at the 2022 Asia Cross Country Rally held in Thailand and Cambodia. After 637 kilometers of time special stages and a total distance of 1,524 kilometers, driver Chayapon Nyota on board the number 105 Triton Strata finished first overall in Group T1 of prototype cross country vehicles with a total time of 8 hours 22 minutes and 42 seconds. The other member of Team Mitsubishi Rally Art, Rifat Car, finished fifth in the class with a total time that is 17 minutes and 14 seconds behind his teammate. More on the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. If you like watching young riders taking their motocross skills to the next level, this Race Weekend feature shows us highlights of Round 4 of the 2022 Clean Fuel National Junior Motocross Series held at the Clean Fuel Motocross Park in Silanka Bite. We are here in Silang, Cavite for the final round of the Clean Fuel National Junior Motocross Series. Let's go on a track to check out the action. Yung race track po okay lang po sa bata, safe po siya. Tapos maganda naman po yung experience kasi kahit matalo ka po okay lang po kasi naka-experience ka. Masaya naman po kasi hindi ko po in-expect na makakatap po ako gano'n. Kasi magagaling po yung kalaban, madaming lalaki, madaming magagaling po. Medyo nakabahan dahil nung unang hit ko ay ano, nag-second lang. Pero nakabawi naman ako ng second week. Kailangan po magaganda ang cardio dahil kailangan malakas ang resistensya. Dahil pag kulang ka sa hangin, wala. Hindi ka tatagal sa loob ng race track. Sobrang saya ko po dahil siyempre unang beses ko po itong overall champion. At ito naman po mga tumulong sa akin. Sila Sir Frostlight, sina Kuya Okse, sina Mang Pide. Buong ano, Team China ala eh, saka yung coach ko si Kaya Glenn. This is the round 4 of Team Fuel National Junior Motocross Series and we're happy to announce that this race culminates the finale of the future riders of motocross in the Philippines and it was good race because there's a lot of uh, competitive racers from the juniors coming out strong to catch up with their points and we see also uh, a lot of uh, supportive parents that uh, talagang pumunta dito to provide uh, cheer to their kids. There's a lot of plans to provide schedules with the calendar for the National Motocross Series. Next year, we're gearing up, we're planning to come out with a bigger one and providing more bigger displacement for them to compete on a higher level. Itong kareran to talagang magbibigay ng saya sa mga bata because this will be a chance for them to participate next year for the FIM Asia International Race. We would like to invite 
uh, viewers of uh, motoring today uh, to follow and of course uh, some aspiring uh, future riders on motocross visit our place here at Clean Fuel Motocross Park in Silang Cavite they will experience a safe and also a good race kasi itong venue na to is talagang maano sila mapapractice po kasama yung uh, yung yung dream nila to be a champion later on And that does it for our coverage of the Clean Fuel National Junior Motocross Series here in Silanca Vita. Be sure to check us out next week for more Race Weekend action. The Clean Fuel Motocross Park is getting to be known as the home of the dirt bike racing. Here's looking forward to the 2023 season of the National Junior Motocross Series. That's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. The all-new Honda HRV is here. Showcase checks out what's new in Honda's popular sub compact crossover. Subcompact crossovers or SUVs are now among the more sought-after vehicles in the local market. They are mostly affordable, fun to drive, and versatile. Great as the daily drive on weekdays, not that many are returning to face-to-face -to -face work at the office. Great for weekend road trips and adventures now that road trips are no longer restricted. Some are stylish, sporty, or both. Honda Cars Philippines is banking on the newly arrived all-new Honda HRV to be among the most popular in the crossover segment. After all, Honda sold more than 7,000 units of its predecessor since it debuted in 2015. The formal unveiling of the third-generation HRV revealed a crossover that is more sleek than sporty, although Honda says it went for the sporty look in the development. Nonetheless, the new Honda HRV looks stylish in a stately sort of way. Two variants of the new HRV were unveiled, the V-Turbo CVT and the SCVT. The top of the line V-Turbo is 4,385mm long. 1,790mm wide and 1,590mm tall. Just a wee bit longer, 55mm longer to be exact, but just as wide and tall as its lower priced sibling, the SCVT. Interestingly enough, Honda lists the SCVT as sitting higher above the road than the V-Turbo CVT. 196mm ground clearance compared to 181mm. The added length can be easily explained by the Sport Type front bumper with the amp-up line as well as the Sport Type spoiler that distinguishes the V-Turbo CVT from the SCVT. Other distinguishing features are the black mesh type grille, the platinum headlight extension, the dual tape pipe finishers, and of course the turbo emblem. Both, however, share full LED headlights that come with auto on off function with 15 second timer, LED daytime running lights, projector type fog lamps, side turn signal lights integrated in the side door mirrors, LED taillights with light bar, LED high mount stop lamp, shark and antenna, tailgate spoiler, and rear intermittent wipers with washer. The V-Turbo CVT can also be distinguished from its sibling by its 17-inch gray alloy wheel strap by 215-60 R17-96 tires. Honda has gone on the premium side to sell the new HRV with the V-Turbo CVT getting more of the pricey stuff, like the rich leather upholstery for the seats. But the fabric upholstery on the SCVT doesn't look shabby at all. In fact, it looks quite rich and yes, sporty. Also wrapped in leather are the steering and the shift knob. The cabin of the HRV V Turbo CVT also looks positively posh with the black and silver accents. No silver accents on the SCVT. The HRV can sit five adults comfortably. The driver's seat slides and reclines and adjusts for height. The front passenger seat just slides and reclines. 
The second row features Honda's patented ULT seat, ULT for utility, long and tall. The seat for three splits and folds flat 60-40 comes in the rear armrest. The V-Turbo CVT dash and instrumentation is quite tidy and modern with a 7-inch digital display. The rotary knobs for the air conditioning look cool and make controlling cabin temperature quite easy. Mochimps of the new HRV comes with a single-zone automatic air conditioning with a new air diffusion system that cools the cabin more efficiently as well as rear air vents. Both variants of the HRV share the same 8-inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system which comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, hands-free telephone, audio streaming, USB input, and 6 speakers. They also share many of the modern conveniences found in premium vehicles including smart keyless entry with one push start system, power windows and door locks, auto power folding door mirrors. Both also share the comfort and convenience features now standard in crossovers, ambient cabin lighting, for bottle holders, four cup holders, 12 volt accessory socket, sun visors with illuminated mirrors, map lights, cargo area lights, tonneau cover. The V-Turbo CVT adds auto dimming rear view mirrors and two rear USB charging ports. Honda is making a lot of local car enthusiasts happy by offering the HRV with a turbocharged engine. Honda says the brief for developing the all-new HRV was to come with a subcompact crossover that combines functionality, safety, and advanced features, sophisticated design, and superior driving experience. The 177 PS and the 240 Nm of torque from the turbocharged 1498cc four-cylinder VTEC engine on the top-of-the-line HRV certainly help fulfill the superior driving experience part of the brief. Although you can't say the SCVT is a slouch with the 121 PS and 145 Nm of torque from its 1.5-liter iVTEC inline-4 engine. Only a continuously variable transmission is available in the local-spec HRV with paddle shifters offering some control over gear shifts. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes to provide a comfortable driving position. It also comes with controls for audio, the HFT, the multi-information display, among other things to make motoring more convenient. The V-Turbo CVT powertrain offers three driving modes, Econ, Normal, and Sport, much appreciated in these times of spiraling fuel prices. On Sport mode not available in the SCVT, the HRV is a truly fun drive. The HRV rides road imperfections well with front McPherson struts and axle-type suspension in the rear. The suspension also provides a stable ride even when taking switchbacks on Sport mode. The all-wheel disc brake system ventilated in front comes with an auto brake hold function. The electronic parking brake does away with space eating handbrake lever. The all new Honda HRV comes standard with Honda Sensing, a suite of driver assist technology with functions to give drivers a lot of confidence in driving on crowded city streets, open highways, and modern roads. Honda Sensing includes collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow, lane keeping assist system, road departure mitigation system with lane departure warning, auto high beam, and lead car departure notification system. Drivers will also have to get used to various tones and beeps that warn or alert them of obstacles or possible dangers on the road. Also giving confidence about being protected in the HRV are standard safety features that include 3-point ELR seat belts with reminder for 5, front and side airbags, speed sensing door locks, Isofix child seat anchors. The HRV also comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability assist, hill descent control, hill start assist, and agile handling assist. Whether with a turbocharged VTEC or just the iVTEC engine, the all-new Honda HRV should heighten the senses with its looks, advanced driver assist and safety tech, and comfort and smart connectivity features. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. 
and a 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Volkswagen Philippines has joined the Saludos a Servicio program of the Ayala Group program to honor the noble men and women in uniform in the armed forces, a gesture of gratitude for their patriotism, heroism, and service. These include the active and retired personnel of the Bureau of Fire Protection, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, the Philippine Coast Guard, and the Philippine National Police. As part of the Saludos a Servicio program, VW Philippines is offering exclusive deals for its line of distinguished German precision vehicles to those in the aforementioned uniform services. Until December 31, 2022, special discounts make some VW vehicles more affordable to those in the uniform services. The Santana MPI MT subcompact sedan for just 535,000 pesos. The Santana 180 MPI ATS for 720,000 pesos. The Santana 180 MPI ATSE for 863,000 pesos. The Santana GTS 180 MPI ATSE for 980,000 pesos. The La Vida 230 TSI DSG SE Compact Sedan for 903,000 pesos. The Lamando 280 TSI DSG SE Medsize Sedan for 1,479,000 pesos. The Lamando 280 TSI DSG SEL for 1,613,000 pesos. And the 2022 T Cross 180 MPI ATSE with active info display for 1,283,000 pesos. Also joining the Saludos a Servicio program, Access Philippines is offering special discounts that make its lineup of vehicles even more affordable for those qualified to avail themselves of the Saludos a Servicio deals. These include the Maxxis G10 2020 1.9 AT Elite Plan for just 1,695,000 pesos, the V80 2019 2.5 MT Comfort Van for 1,415,000 pesos, the V80 2019 2.5 MT Transport 18 seater for 1,243,000 pesos, the V80 2019 2.5 MT Transport 15 seater for 1,233,000 pesos, the V80 2022 2.5 MT Flex for 1,025,000 pesos. The Maxxis G50 2021 1.5 AT Premium Compact MPV for 1,273,000 pesos. The G50 2021 1.5 AT Pro for 1,061,000 pesos. The G50 2021 1.5 AT Elite for 1,141,000 pesos. The G50 2021 1.3 MT Comfort for 933,000 pesos. And the Maxxis D60 2021 1.5 AT Pro SUV for 1,121,000 pesos. The D60 2021 1.5 AT Elite for 1,243,000 pesos. Hindi Motor Philippines has taken part in the country's biggest on ground holiday spectacle, the Mall of Asia Night of Lights. SM All of Asia, also in partnership with the Walt Disney Company Philippines Inc., has created seven larger-than-life Disney-themed zones which will be powered by Hyundai. This partnership is actually a reflection of Hyundai's vision of progress in humanity. We want to be present in everything that is important to our customers. That is why we are giving importance to the season of Christmas. This activity is actually a second run for MOA, but this is the first time an automotive brand is participating. Hyundai encourages families to come to MOA to enjoy the MOA Night of Lights while experiencing the comfort, handling, and technological delights of the latest models of the South Korea car maker, including the Creta, the Tucson, the Staria, and the recently launched Stargazer. For the mechanics, any customers uh, that has 1,500 worth single receipt at any establishments from SM MOA, SM by the Bay, S My Son, MOA Square, or IKEA, plus a 500 peso uh, purchase from Disney, can avail of the MOA Night of Lights uh, experience. Hyundai has set up a customer lounge with a display area and redemption booth. Also an attraction at the MOA Night of Lights which will run until January 8, 2023 is the Hyundai Ionic 5 which can be found supplying electricity to the brand's signature cafe through its vehicle-to-load function. All British Cars Inc., sole importer and distributor of Land Rover in the Philippines, has rolled out the new Defender 130, which features a longer wheelbase and extended body that accommodates full-size seating for eight and all off-road capability and articulations of Land Rover all-terrain vehicles. 
Today we are launching the newest to the Defender lineup, which is called the Defender 130. This uh, 130 is our longest vehicle. So we now have three versions in the range. 90, which we call our short wheelbase. The 110, which is a little bit longer to give more interior space. This one goes a stage further, adds more interior space, allows us to put a third row of seats. So this now is a full eight-seater. Made available locally is the Defender 130 with a D306 cylinder diesel engine for only 12,190,000 pesos with a bespoke accessory pack that includes fixed side steps, deep sided rubber mats, and matte load space rubber mats. Underneath the hood, we have an amazing inline six cylinder diesel called a D300. This benefits from being immensely torque very very torquey right across the rev range so it's quick it's smooth and it's one of our engines that has the least amount of engine noise vibration and harshness it's a super smooth power unit and that's the week that was in motoring thank you for joining us also please don't forget to check us out on social media until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with the last law commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.